Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Now, Superman, strange visitor from the destroyed planet Krypton, who has dedicated his existence on Earth to championing the weak and the oppressed. Superman, valiant fighter for truth and justice, who mingles with ordinary men disguised as mild-mannered Clark Kent, news reporter for the Daily Planet. As you remember, Clark Kent and Lois Lane were sent to the manufacturing town of Melville by editor Perry White to investigate a mysterious explosion in Hans Holbein's doll factory. An explosion that took a toll of 13 lives. Kent, as Superman, discovered the cause of the catastrophe and enlisted the aid of the Melville chief of police to bring Holbein and his helper Joe to justice. But the one mistake Superman made was to separate from Lois Lane and the police chief in his search for Holbein. When Superman returned to Holbein's house, he found the chief severely hurt from a blow on the head and Lois Lane missing together with Holbein and Joe. As our story opens today, editor Perry White, who has come to Melville in response to Clark Kent's urgent call, is seated in the waiting room of the Melville Hospital with Kent, waiting to talk to the chief of police. Listen. Dr. Parker wanted in surgery. Dr. Parker wanted in Kent, I don't understand it. Dr. It's like a mad dream, a nightmare. If I'd thought for one moment that you and Lois were going to run into anything like this, I never would have sent you up here. Never. Oh, it wasn't your fault, Mr. White. Who could have suspected that Holbein was packing a dangerous high explosive inside his doll? No, he still can't believe it. Well, you saw one of the dolls. They were all alike. Each one contained a metal cylinder filled with some new explosive. Why, just a few grains of it almost blew up the police chief's desk. But Kent, what was his object? What's his game? Well, we won't know that until we lay our hands on him. And when we do... Oh, I don't care about Holbein anymore, Kent. The important thing is to find Lois. Where can she be? Well, I told you all I know, Mr. White. And I got to Holbein's house after searching for him at the airport where he kept his plane. The chief was stretched out on the floor, half conscious, and Lois was gone. But she left a message. Yes, written in lipstick on the table. All it said was, am on island. Yes, yes, you told me that. But it isn't much help. Now, I've studied the map carefully. Every inch of it. There isn't an island off this coast. Not one within a thousand miles of Melville. The man at the airport said Holbein's ship only had a cruising range of 500. Well, maybe the chief can help us. I hope so, Kent. Oh, what's keeping that nurse? Oh, here she comes now. All right, Mr. White, you can see the chief of police now. Good. Come on, Kent. All right. I certainly hope the chief can give us a clue of some kind. And if he can't... Here we are. This is his room. Hello, Kent. Hello, chief. Well, this is Mr. White, editor of the Daily Planet. Oh, glad to know you, Mr. White. You had a pretty close call, chief. Yes, and if Mr. Kent hadn't come when he did, I probably wouldn't have been here to tell the tale. Well, we only have a few minutes, Chief. Doctor's orders. Perhaps you'd better tell us what happened. Well, when you left for the Sudbury Airport to try and find Holbein, Miss Lane and I decided to go to Holbein's house on the chance he might be there. He was there, wasn't he? Yes, he and his helper, Joe. I had Holbein covered all right until his helper leaped out of a closet and hit me over the head with the butt of a gun. Then everything went black. You didn't hear them say anything about going to some island and taking Miss Lane with them? Not a word, Kent. Well, tell me this, Chief. What did Holbein do with the dolls he made in his factory? He shipped them to the city by boat. By boat? Yes. He had an old 80-foot commercial fishing boat. Rebuilt it and used it to ship the dolls. Well, where is the boat, Chief? Well, the last time I saw it, it was tied up at its Water Street dock. I think it made a trip a few days before the factory explosion. You sure Holbein shipped the dolls to the city, Chief? I'm not sure of anything now, Kent. Not after what you discovered. The high explosive inside the dolls. Could it be possible, Mr. White, that Holbein was taking the dolls to this island Lois mentioned in her message? And not to the city. Hmm? What island? There isn't any island. Now, wait a minute, Mr. White. I've got an idea. Assume Holbein was transporting these deadly dolls to some island off the coast. If he used the rebuilt fishing boat, there's probably a navigation chart aboard. You mean a chart that will tell us where the island is? Exactly. Maybe the island's too small to appear on a map. Hey, Kent may have something there, Mr. White. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go down and search the boat. Every minute we lose may be a minute of horror for Lois. You say Holbein's boat is tied up at the foot of Water Street, Chief? Yes, I think it's called the Agnes K. Well, come along, Kent. All right. We'll let you know if anything develops, Chief. All right, Mr. White. In the meantime, I'll send out a five-state alarm for Miss Lane. Good luck. Thanks, Chief. I certainly hope your idea is good, Kent. Because if it isn't, 
I won't know where to turn next. Dr. Henderson, report to Ward 3. Dr. Henderson, report to Ward 3. Well, there's the dock, Mr. White. And a fishing boat tied up alongside. Must be Holbein's. I guess I'd better park here and we can walk across the street. Mm, heavy mist over the harbor. Yes. We're lucky it's dark and misty. All right, this way, Mr. White. Are you sure that's Holbein's boat, Kent? Yes, yes, I can see the name on the bow. Agnes K. It doesn't look like there's anyone aboard. Uh, we'll find out soon enough. Looks like a sturdy boat. Yeah, it is. Here. Climb over the rail, Mr. White. Easy. Yeah. Drop down quietly. There we are. Now to look around. Keep low, Mr. White. I can see a light in one of the cabins under the pilot house. What'll we do? You climb back up on the dock and keep a lookout. I'll see who's in that cabin. Here. I'll give you a hand. There. That does it. Now, call me if anyone comes. Take care, Ken. Take care. Mr. White can't see me from the dock, so I think it's time to change to Superman. Whoever's on this boat may be dangerous. There we are. I'll just move along here in the shadows and look through the window. I hope it's Holbein. If it is... Uh, no, it isn't Holbein. It's a dark-skinned man. Spaniard or an Italian. Playing solitaire. Wonder whether he'd like company. Well, we'll see. Good evening. Hey, what do you want here? Oh, just looking around. You the only one on the boat? Yeah, now, you get out. You get off of this boat. Put that knife away, my friend. You may cut yourself. Now you get out of sir. Oh, it's fights you want, eh? All right, come and get it. <coughs> Try this. <coughs> and this. <coughs> now for the finishing touch. <coughs> now, let's see what we can find. Ah, that safe looks promising. Huh, locked, eh? Well, it won't take long to open. Here goes. <laughs> that was too easy. Like opening a sardine can. Well, seems to be plenty of stuff inside. Ah, what's this all rolled up? What? Why, it's a map. A geodetic chart. Yes, this is it. Just what we need. Ah, now to change back to Clark Kent and call Mr. White. Mr. White! Mr. White! Coming, Kent. Kent. Kent, are you in trouble? No trouble, Mr. White. Come inside here, under the light. Say, what happened to that fellow on the floor? Oh, he came after me, stumbled and hit his head. Here, look. Look at this chart. What does it mean? See this neck of land running out from the mainland? Yes, yes, I see it. Well, it's at least 50 miles long, right out into the ocean. I still don't understand. Here, now look. Look close. Way out at the very tip, two penciled lines have been drawn across the land, and it's marked channel. Now, that means someone, maybe Holbein, dug a channel across the neck of land, surrounding the tip completely by water and making it an island. The very island we're looking for. Kent, I believe you've hit on it. And I won't waste another minute. I'll go down to the airport, hire a plane, and go after Lois. Now, hold on, Kent. I'm going with you. But, Mr. White... Uh, you heard what I said, Kent. I'm going with you. I won't rest easy until I see Lois alive. Speeding to the airport, Clark Kent and Editor Perry White hire a seaplane and wing out into the fog-bound night. At the same moment, on a tiny man-made island 50 miles out in the ocean, Hans Holbein and his helper, Joe, listen to a police call on a powerful shortwave radio. Division 421, calling all Coast Guard stations and police boats, reported missing Lois Lane, L-A-N-E, newspaper reporter, height 5 feet 4 inches, weight 110 pounds, black hair, brown eyes, last seen wearing tweed suit, brown shoes, watch all fishing boats and private planes, I will repeat. Marine Division 4-2-1. I don't like the way things are shaping up, Mr. Holbein. What do you mean? That Lane girl. Keeping her here ain't doing us no good. She'll just draw the cops like honey draws flies. Well, what can we do with her? Well, the barometer's fallen. That means a storm coming up. The tide's running out. I'm for putting her in a rowboat and letting her go. Out to sea. Hey, maybe you're right. Get her, Joe. Come on, oh, sister. Oh, You're for a little ride. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, We've decided not to keep you here any longer, Miss Lane. That's very sweet of you. We're letting you go. Let me go, Will. Come on, here. Bring her along, Joe. Stop it. Let me go. I'm telling you, you can't do this. Never mind. You're going like this. You can't do this. This is another one of your tricks. There ain't no trick, girlie. 
You're just going on a sea voyage. Uh, here's the rowboat. Get her in. No, you can't do this. Come on, get in. Make it fast. Oh, no. Take the oars out, Mr. Holbein. No, no. Okay, shove her off. There she goes. She won't bother us again. Alone in a small open rowboat with a storm brewing on the dark sea. How will Lois Lane keep the tiny craft afloat until help arrives? Is help near at hand? Or will Clark Kent and Editor White be unable to find the tiny man-made island in all the far-reaching darkness? Tune in next time and follow the thrilling story of Superman. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine.